Dr. Black. Since I've been on Dr. Black Superfood, I haven't been sick. I'm Dr. Dennis Black. I make my Texas Superfood from 55 raw, vine-ripened fruits and vegetables. The Acerola cherry. Alfalfa leaf, aloe vera, apples, asparagus, banana, beets, bell pepper, broccoli. You can see all 55 on TexasSuperfood.com. Mangosteen, pineapple, sweet potato, papaya, parsley, peach. In a capsule or a powder, one daily dose of Texas Superfood delivers the same nutrition as 12, count them, 12 servings of raw fruits and vegetables. Raspberry, spinach, all of the nutrients that we need on a daily basis. Wouldn't you rather be healthy, energetic, and fit? Join us on TexasSuperfood.com or call us at 844-DR-BLACK. That's 844-DR-BLACK. TexasSuperfood.com. CEOs, feeling irritable, listless, anxious, employees feeling sluggish or lacking commitment? You could be suffering from business low T or low technology, an affliction commonly associated with outdated, inefficient human capital management systems. Paycom uses unique technology to increase employee efficiency, reducing risk, all while eliminating the telltale symptom of low T, paying more every year for the same outdated software. With Paycom, your business T levels will skyrocket. Warning, use Paycom only as directed. Side effects include increased productivity, profits, and morale. Paycom has been known to cause regular heartbeats and nights filled with sleep. It's time you had an honest conversation with your HR staff about switching your old low-T system to Paycom. Text the word CLOUD, that's C-L-O-U-D, to 511 and receive a free guide. The top seven tips to consider when switching HR and payroll companies. CLOUD to 511 Remember to text the word CLOUD to 511 and receive the top seven tips. Paycom, raise the bar on HR. <laughs> Talk 1470, WWNN, Pompano Beach, Boca Raton, Miami, Fort Lauderdale. I remember, I remember the moment. I remember the moment. I'll never forget that moment. As long as I live. As long as I live. A storage tank ruptured, and for miles, chemicals were pushing up against the riverbanks. This was a big, big deal, and it was going to have a serious impact on communities up and down the river. I remember the moment this local guy came up to me and said, they call the guard out for this stuff? You probably thought we were all about hurricanes, tornadoes, fighting Mother Nature. Hey, it's a chemical spill. It's a disaster. It affects the water supply, threatens wildlife. We're talking about the health of entire communities and people's livelihoods. You bet we're ready for these kinds of things. We were out there with booms to prevent the spill from expanding. We were responsible for protecting and monitoring the sensitive wetlands. I also remember the moment that same guy came up to me and said, I don't know what we would have done if they hadn't called the guard up. Learn more about how you can protect your friends, families, neighbors, and the environment. Everything that makes up your community. Go to NationalGuard.com. Sponsored by the Florida National Guard. Aired by the Florida Association of Broadcasters and this station. AM 1470 WNN. Listen live at WWNNRadio.com and like us on Facebook. Search AM 1470 WNN. One day, I'll teach chemistry to kids. I'm going to be an architect. My dream is to be a chef. This is a world of possibilities. A world in which people who put their minds to something can really make a difference. My goal is to help the environment. Someday I'll find a cure for cancer. At the U.S. Department of Education's Office of Federal Student Aid, we believe that aspiring minds can achieve anything. So we dedicate ourselves to making sure everyone has an opportunity to go to college. Each year, we provide more than $150 billion in grants, loans, and work-study funds making higher education possible for anyone at any stage of life. I can go back to college. I can change careers. I can make a difference. Federal Student Aid, proud sponsor of the American Mind. Learn more about Money for College at studentaid.gov. What you want to know. What you need to know. Talk 1470 WNN. The opinions expressed on the following sponsored program are strictly those of the host, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of this station, its staff, management, or sponsors. Welcome to the Ask the Experts show with local celebrity hosts, Steve-O and Renee. Sit back each week while Steve-O and Renee educate you with live in-studio experts, such as lawyers, doctors, home improvement, and financial experts in their field. 
Call in and have your questions answered each week at 888-565-1470. Now, here is Steve-O and Renee with today's expert in their field. Welcome to another Ask the Experts, our Monday show after the holidays. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Man, we got a lot of guests today in the <laughs> studio. <laughs> Anyhow, <laughs> a lot. if you've just tuned in for the first time, our show finds the top experts in the fields of legal, health, financial, and home improvement. And we have been so lucky because we really have gotten the creme de la creme. Today is, it's our favorite show. It's, it's our, one of our only shows that's the first Monday of each month. It's our, now we can call it our K Bender Rimbaum show Pretty instead cool. of Ask the Experts. We have the two senior partners in studio today. If you have a question on HOA, community association, these guys are the ones to call. You can call us at 888-565-1470. If you want to watch today's show, go to their website at www.kb, that's KB as in boy, R-L-E-G-A-L, kbrlegal.com. You can watch us today. And last week or last month, we had the highest numbers of this show to go back and review the show. So let's welcome, oh, I got it. My co-host, who's kicking me under the table. I have not. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> that was Robert or Michael. Anyway, my co-host. No introduction needed. <laughs> Renee. You know that laugh. Everybody knows that laugh. But let's welcome two great friends of the show, Robert Kay and Michael Bender. Hi, guys. Nice. Happy Hi, New Year. thank Happy New Year you. To you. This show is... Listen, you should tell your friends about this show. Tell your association that we have a show like this on. It's the first Monday from 4 to 5 each month. And we, I don't know if they're allowed to say this, but we sure can. We have the best attorneys when it comes to association, community law, Absolutely. HOA. We have the best. So if you have questions, again, 888-565-1470. So tell us a little bit about your law firm. Well, K. Bender Rambam is a law firm that's been continuously in practice in this area since 1992. We provide primarily representation for community associations on all facets of, of their needs, as well as general corporate work, but primarily community associations, condominiums, homeowners association, cooperatives, and we assist from reviewing their documents, providing opinions as to what they can and cannot do at various times, covenant enforcement issues where owners are not following the rules and regulations of the community, contract review, a collection of uh, unpaid assessments, uh, dealing with construction defects as necessary, uh, basically all the day-to-day -day needs, any general civil litigation that they're involved with, uh, bankruptcy issues that come up across the gamut of any type of issues that they may have. So what are some common issues that you see associations faced with? Well, we see, you know, things that you have in any kind of a lifestyle where you have a lot of people living close together, people don't get along with each other, uh, what the association is supposed to do when this happens, people don't necessarily uh, like to follow certain restrictions on their property, thinking that it doesn't apply to them. Um, where other owners are uh, interested in following the covenants and having everybody do so in the neighborhood as well. Uh, service animals has been a big issue, uh, emotional support animals uh, in, in recent months and likely will continue to do so. Um, collection of assessments has uh, always been a big thing. It's not as big as it was a couple of years ago, thank goodness, but uh, the, there's always the need for some uh, pursuit of unpaid assessments that comes up from time to time. So how do you go about resolving those issues? So assessments <laughs> meaning like painting or anything additional? Just general assessments. Right. You know, the month-to-month, the -month, uh, what people call the dues, the maintenance, the assessments, it's all the same. You know, the association will adopt a budget for its annual needs and everybody pays their proportionate share. And if somebody doesn't pay, that means they won't have enough money to operate. So the association will 
uh, have the right to file a lien against the property. And then if they don't collect off of that, a foreclosure case, it's an instance where somebody can actually lose their home if they don't right. uh, treat it seriously. Wow. I have, I have a question that somebody keeps emailing us. I thought we asked this last time, but they wanted to know what do they do if they're trying to get more handicapped parking at a condominium they live at that is under an association? Well, handicapped parking is an issue that comes up quite often as well. Most communities, when they're built, uh, they will provide for some handicapped parking. But generally speaking, handicapped parking in a residential community doesn't fall under the same restrictions that it would in commercial buildings. Um, when they're first built, there are ordinances in place and approvals from local governments that will be necessary that will include certain amount of handicapped parking. But once the community is built and operating, uh, there is no ability to change or increase that. It, the common elements, which is the area that we're talking about, are designated in a certain fashion. And some of them, if they're handicapped parking, most likely are geared for guests, not for owners. Owners will have a, assigned parking to them in many of these communities. Uh, those that have a specific need for special parking uh, may make a request for what's called a reasonable accommodation under fair housing laws. And if the property can accommodate it and make the adjustments necessary to have a handicapped spot, uh, that can happen. The costs involved will be the requesting owner's responsibility, oh, okay. not, so not they, the association. They could add additional spots because even my father lives in Kings Point. Yes, there's in his section where he's at one handicap spot, which to me is unusual because his friends are elderly that come to sure. visit him. That, that's a so small that's number. <laughs> right. I'm saying that that's already taken. Well, what what you're also dealing with is. The parking area is generally considered common elements in a condominium. There's a provision in the statutes that limits the ability to make alterations to the common elements. It's, it addresses you to the governing documents, the declaration of condominium, to see what restrictions there are. And if the declaration is silent, it would require a vote of 75% of all the unit owners to make a material alteration or a substantial change. So so where you, it, they, the owners could vote to approve changing certain area that isn't parking and making it parking as a material alteration to the common elements. You might have a site plan issue as well. There could be a site plan issue where they have to get approval, approval of the their city, local the city or the county where the property is located. It, it's not a simple process. It sounds like an expensive one too. can be, It's yes. not just laying some cement down or something. Right. Um, I keep getting the same request, and he also asked about ramps. Same thing with same thing with ramps. Yes. ramps. Mm -hmm. right. Okay, although uh, that happens, I'd say more frequently than requests for handicap parking. You know, through the years, the handicap access ramps have been something that it's more individualized. So it's often into the apartment as opposed to. Uh, through the parking lot, but it could be an ac access from their individual parking spot up into the the sidewalk. Right. Again, that's going to be at the owner's expense. And the ramp is a, considered a reasonable modification. So we had ta we've talked in the past, and I'm sure we'll touch upon when Robert mentioned we get a lot of issues with emotional support animals, where communities have no pet rule restrictions. And so owners come in with uh, su uh, documentation to that they need to provide this support, that they require this assistance animal under fair housing laws. They get a reasonable accommodation. A ramp is a similar situation. You have an individual in a wheelchair who can't get up the lip on the, to the door, so they request that the ra a ramp be built across the hall uh, or the, 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 uh, the crosswalk, whatever it may be, and that would be a reasonable modification. Uh, and so a similar approach would apply. And uh, getting to that, th those are the types of, uh, those questions come up a lot. And, and to that end, we created some education classes, which we do provide out of both our Palm Beach Garden and Pompano Beach offices uh, on fair housing issues. Um, we have a one hour class, which focuses exclusively on assistance animals, whether they are considered pets, assistance animals versus pets. 
And we do also have a two-hour program which expands upon the assistance animals and also includes discussions on reasonable modifications like the parking spaces, like the ramps, or other modifications that may be requested. One that comes up sometimes is people want to put a rail or a chair in the pool for access to the pool. Let me just mention, today's first half hour of our show is sponsored by SCAR Insurance Group. Yes, so we want to thank them. And um, uh, I think we're, they've got a spot that they're going to be running during our show. And it, I'll just add to that. Yes, I wanted to actually mention that. So thank you, Steve. Um, SCAR Insurance Group. Uh, we're proud to have them uh, sponsor the first half of the show today. SCAR Insurance Group, uh, led by Barry SCAR, uh, is a good friend of mine. Sense. Yeah, and, uh, and his uh, great people up at SCAR Insurance Group. And they are uh, insurance, a community association, very experienced insurance company. Uh, they, are, they do function throughout the state of Florida. And as I said, you'll hear their commercial and get their information. Okay. Now, if you have a question for either Michael or Robert, you could call us at 888-565-1470. So let's talk about town hall meetings now. This, I, I tell you, I think this is so cool that you guys do this because it's not like something you have to do. You're doing it out of... you do. We it, want to do it. Exactly. So, and they're free. So it's about giving back. So it's not just about taking. So I love that you guys do that. Right. Okay, and Michael's going to explain each seminar exactly what sure. is going to be discussed. Right, we're, we're, and we're, we're, we are very proud. This is our seventh year doing our town hall seminars. Uh, it's something that Robert and I put together uh, down here in Pompano, and um, Jeff Rembaum is doing this, uh, this first year up in the Palm Beach Gardens area and uh, north there as well. And uh, so everyone should go to the kbrlegal.com website to check for dates and times for both Palm Beach Gardens and Pompano Beach Town Hall seminars. Um, we have our, we had a town hall seminar last month. Uh, we had about 50 in 10 and it was fantastic. Good. Great attendees, very interactive. And the town hall seminars are set up to be that way. People will RSVP, it is required to RSVP. As Renee mentioned, they are free to attend. There are light snacks available, but, and we, but we do need to know if you're going to be attending so that we can be sure we have enough seating and enough food. Um, and also, and most importantly, we encourage people to submit, along with their RSVP, questions, either questions or subject matter. We prefer them to be more general in nature as opposed to document-specific because we're not obviously reviewing governing documents during the program. But... Uh, we got a, a, just a variety of questions. We were we spoke probably the the seminar is set for two hours. We usually end up going at least two hours. So is it like open format most of the seminars? It is. Well, what happens is so we'll get started. We usually get a, a list of questions or subject matters sent to us by a few attendees at, at a minimum, uh, and we will generally will will open up with some of those. Uh, but throughout the program, those will those types of questions will branch off into other topic areas um, or. Uh, we, we will answer, we'll, we'll get into a particular topic. There'll be a few questions on that topic, whether it's uh, official records, whether it's uh, financial records, whether it's assistance animals, uh, addressing unauthorized tenants, bank foreclosures. I mean, the topics are varied, but they're the topics that are of most interest to those in attendance. So I just named five. All five of those are were, those the were, hot topics. Those well, are the big topics, right those there. Were, those are on that day. Those, right. Those <laughs> on are that particular day. Well, okay. those are among. Let's put it this way. I would imagine if you did a top ten list, those five are primarily going to come in that top ten list every time. But the attendees at, at this seminar really were in, in, were active. They were active. They uh, interactive, asking questions, provide, and then asking additional questions, and and it's really a lot of give and take, which Robert and I pr really enjoy be able to go into these programs, have some subject matters that, that have been provided to us by those in attendance, and then be able to basically say, okay, new topic. Who has a new topic? And we'll get some hands and we'll get a new topic. Which is nice because this is free legal advice. On the, but, and it's free, but it's most importantly, it's on the issues that you're, you're coming to hear. Yes. It's not a set agenda. It is, it, it's a, it, the agenda is actually set by those who attend. And that really and works well. Because of Who that, each of, our, each of our town hall seminars are different than the prior ones or from each other. So people that come to multiple ones won't hear the same things, likely. Right. Who are the people who come to these? Are, are we, they presidents of associate? We get the, board members. We get board members. I mean, it's an, it's, it's, it is a program that is set up for board members and managers, as well as for owners who are inter interested owners, owners who are interested in 
how their community functions. Maybe they're interested in getting onto the board and they have questions. Um, but yes, we do have a lot of board members, board presidents who will come on their own to report back or bring their boards uh, because it's an excellent opportunity to be able to get free, gu free guidance. Ask questions that you've wanted the answers to but hadn't had an opportunity to ask an experienced community association attorney. We also get property managers that come in that are oh, have right. multiple communities that mm -hmm. have different types of issues and, and they always have good questions. Realtors? Okay. Do realtors come to any of these at all? We have had realtors, Some, we've had not bankers, so much, yeah. we've had a CPAs, um, but I think the most, for the most part you have your property managers, you have your board members, and then you'll have some owners. That's a great service they provide. And so we do have, we have two coming up this month. Uh, the first uh, in, uh, is at Art, the Art Serve in Fort Lauderdale on Sunrise Boulevard. Sponsored That's, by? Uh, that is go, uh, go, Alliance Association Bank is actually oh, uh, very nice. joined us in, go, in sponsoring with us that program. And we will have Craig Huntington of uh, Alliance Association Bank. He's the president who will be in attendance along with some other people, I'm sure, from the bank to provide uh, some information as well as to be able to address questions on banking, whether it be association-related banking, bank loans, so that you get an additional perspective. And it's something, this is the first, the first town hall seminar that we've actually uh, had an, ad, uh, someone come in and join us, and we thought it, would, it was an additional added benefit to concept. our attendees. That's, that's so wonderful. And, you know, and so if they're interested, they have, and, and so we're excited about that. Uh, and then, so that's at the Art Serve, 645 on January 13th. So it's Tuesday. next Tuesday. And then at the end of the month, they'll be at six, uh, January 27th at 6.30. We'll be at the Knob Hill Clubhouse on 1200 Sunset Strip in Sunrise. So we have the Art Serve in Fort Lauderdale on Sunrise Boulevard on January 13th. The Knob Hill Clubhouse on January 27th at 6.30. Uh, and I also, again, please go to the website, kbrlegal.com, so you can see what programs are available uh, that Mr. Rembam will be hosting in the Palm Beach Gardens area as well in January. Hey, Liz, we got to go to break. When we come back, we have more with Kay, Bender, and Rinbaum. We'll be right back. Is your community association looking for prompt, effective, cost-efficient, and understandable legal advice and services? You'll find that and more with K. Bender Rembaum, a full-service commercial law firm concentrating on the representation of more than 800 community associations throughout Florida. With offices in Broward and Palm Beach counties, K. Bender Rembaum assists clients in all matters of association representation, including, but not limited to, collection of assessments, contract negotiation, covenant review and amendment, covenant enforcement, and construction defect claims. Under the direction of attorneys Robert K., Michael Bender, and Jeffrey Rembaum, K. Bender Rembaum is dedicated to providing clients with an unparalleled level of personalized and professional service regardless of their size and takes into account their individual needs and financial concerns. For more information, visit www.kbrlegal.com or call 954-928. 0680. Could your community association benefit from having a more hands on, education centered insurance agent? For over 30 years, SCAR Insurance Group has worked with hundreds of community associations throughout Florida, putting education first. Let's face it, insurance can be very complicated and complex. It really pays for itself to partner with the right insurance agency and not just get a quote. Family owned and operated, every employee at SCAR Insurance takes pride in creating an exceptional, warm, family-like experience for every client, every time. SCAR Insurance Group specializes in community association insurance, but can also assist you with home, auto, business, and life insurance. Aren't you tired of not getting all the facts up front from your insurance agent? Contact us today for a free, no-obligation analysis of your current insurance program. Call now at 800-299-5055. Again, 800-299-5055. Or visit us at www.scarinsurance.com. And we're back, and we're here with the senior partners, Robert Kay and Michael Bender. And we're just talking about some of the town hall meetings, but you also mentioned about a certification class that you're also going yes. to. 
be having. Yeah, what we uh, we also provide uh, sort of board member education at our, our out of both out of our Pompano office. These are out of our office locations in Pompano Beach and Palm Beach Gardens, and under the Florida law, if you want to be a board member and serve on the board of either an HOA, condominium, or a cooperative, you are required to have uh, you are required to have a certification. Yearly certification. Well, no, so no it's, it's not. Yearly? It's not yearly. It's it, oh. you need to be as long as you're cer you need to have certification uh, to serve on the board, and that certification is something that. And I'll tell you. Let me explain. The certification can be obtained in one of two ways. One way is to complete a form that has been created by the state, which essentially says that you have read your documents and you will promise to, I'm paraphrasing, uh, promise to uphold them and um, meet your fiduciary obligation to the membership and to the, the uh, association. No obligation to understand. Right, they're right. <laughs> they, they, have, they remove that from the statute, so you only have to read them. That means I can do it. And, and, I, will exactly say, and I will say that, uh, and that is something that you have to submit within 90 days after being elected or appointed to the board. And if you don't, then you're suspended from being on the board until you do. Okay, now, if... And, and, and while that is an easy option, the alternative way to get certification, one which we recommend, regardless of whether you fill out that paper to, that you, to certify your, have yourself certified, is board member education, a division approved board member education class. And that is what we offer out of our both Palm Beach Gardens and Pompano Beach offices. And it is a two hour class for, and we have it separated. So if you want, if you're a condominium board member or want to become a condominium board member, we offer those classes uh, on particular days. Same with the HOA, and then uh, those are those are monthly or bi-monthly. And then the cooperative class we offer quarterly. And uh, it's an, it's a two hour again. It's a free presentation for board members. Managers also attend, and they are entitled. We do offer free CEU credits to any managers who want to attend these classes. And uh, it goes over the basically the ABCs of being a board member of your community. It lays the foundation for you. It goes over seven different areas, including operations, uh, finances, official records, contracts, covenant enforcement, and, and it really gives a very solid foundation. And you leave with materials as well, uh, which you can fall back on should you have further questions. Uh, and, now, and this we, is for anybody, not just properties that you represent. Oh, so of anybody course. No, can these attend. are open to the public. To, these are open right. to the public, and and we and we do encourage. We encourage, and our board members of our clients, we actually we absolutely encourage them to come get education uh, as, as much as possible. Uh, and but whether right, whether you are a client of the firm or not, it is important that you do get education. It'll help you be a better board member, and that's why we offer the service. Uh, we have them, uh, and what I wanted to say was the the the. If you're interested in becoming a board member, if you come to a class, that certification is good for one year. So if your election is in sometime later this year and you come to our class, we have our cooperative class January 13th in Pompano. We have a condominium class January 20, 20th in Pompano and we have a homeowner association class January 22nd in Pompano. We have, uh, and we have the condo class at 20th in Palm Beach Gardens and the HOA class the 13th in Palm Beach Gardens. So if you come and take those now, this month, and you get elected to your board any time this year, you will have already met your certification. Unlike that certificate, which is only good for 90 days after, the division approved education certificate is valid from one year before to up to 90 days after. So if you're interested in become, possibly becoming a board member sometime this year, Come get education now. Come get educated. See what you're what you're in for. Yes. Uh, but get get your and, and then it, it'll be valid. Obviously, if you're recently elected to the board or your election's coming up the next couple of months, come get that free education and really be ready to roll. Do you teach them how to get elected? I was at. I better not say the. Oh, name. That's not a legal question. <laughs> no, um, I could not believe this was like voting for the president of the United States. People walking around the complex with the names on it. That's it the was, politics of it, and we stay out wow. of that. Wow. <laughs> that was amazing. So, right. But anybody can come to these. That's the most important thing. And if you have a question right now, because we have two of the best right now, if you have an HOA question, 888-565-1470, 888-565-1470. So I want you to give out your phone number again because your offices are in Palm Beach. Your is or I'm sorry, in Pompano and, and Palm Beach Gardens. In Palm Beach Gardens, give them your phone number again. 
Uh, main line for either office is one 800 974 Directly to Palm Beach Gardens is 561-241-4462. And to Pompano Beach, 954-928-0680. And all the information about our firm and about the courses uh, and uh, it, it can be located at kbrlegal.com. If you're interested in attending, you can uh, email us, RSVP at info, I-N-F-O, at kbrlegal.com or call the 800-974-0680 and just indicate your name, the name of your association, and which class you'd like to be attend- you'd like to attend. And the classes that we do have have limited space, so we do need everybody interested in attending to reserve their place. RSVP, let us know they're coming. And if you do RSVP that you're coming, please do come. <laughs> yeah, that'd be <laughs> nice. Yeah, right. it, just just a, one last thing about that, because you were asking if it's an annual certification. So long as, once you're elected or appointed to the board, so long if you have your certification, so long as you continue service to that community uninterrupted, then that one time that your, your certification remains valid. Should you step off and then get back on, then, then you, you will have, have to, to get certified. certified. Yes. Gotcha. Are most condos now all have their own homeowners association? Well, every condominium has a condominium association, okay. which is much like a homeowner association, but because of the different statutes, they're they're like terms of art. So, now condominium association for condominiums, homeowner associations for homeowners uh, communities. But almost every condo has their own condo association. Every condominium will have its own association. Same thing Sometimes they have multiple associations, like uh, as you mentioned, Kings Point will have a building condominium association and a section condominium association and a master Kings Point association. So th- there could be multiple layers of associations. Homeowners associations are not as universal as condominiums. Condominiums are created by statute. They only exist because of the statute, and the statute provides everyone shall have an association. Uh, Homeowner communities were created by their recorded governing documents, their Declaration of Covenants, and in later years, in the mid-90s, was the first legislation for homeowners associations, but they've existed. They are not created by statute. So, whether or not the community has an association is something you'd have to look at the governing documents to and confirm. Most of the communities here, it's very prevalent in South Florida. It is very prevalent. Oh, yes. So I'm the president of my association. Congratulations. Not really, but <laughs> why should I hire your firm? Well, there There's are many reasons, reasons to, yes. to be hear. hiring our firm. Uh, first and, and foremost is our knowledge and expertise and background in the field of community association. And this is all you guys do. It isn't all we do, but it's our primary primary focus. focus. Correct. And and we don't have a long shingle. You're not a boutique of this is mostly what you handle though. Yes. uh, The I'd say better than 90 percent of the efforts of the people in our firm are geared towards some form of community association issues. And laws I'm sure are always the are laws changing? are changing uh, on an annual basis and certainly more frequently than that through decisions of the courts. We keep up to date, of course, and we are also involved in the legislative process in helping to draft the laws uh, as because they're always being drafted. And if you don't participate in that process, then you can't complain about what you get. Exactly. Uh, what else would we want to suggest? Yes, um, Me. <laughs> in addition to our knowledge base and Robert, uh, I mean, there are a lot of experienced attorneys in South Florida who do community association work. I'm good friends with many of them. Um, what I think separates our firm, why, like if you're coming and say, why should I hire you? Exactly. In addition to coming to you with the experience you need, it's the customer service aspect. That's what I see sorely missing in South Florida. Uh, and possibly throughout the entire state. As you know, we, we represent clients as, in Mar- as far north as Martin County and, and over all the way south to uh, Miami-Dade and even uh, the Keys. And what we get, a lot of what we, when people are coming to us is they're concerned about the fact that they can't get access to their attorney or when they reach their attorney, they're not getting responses uh, or the responses they're getting are 
are long-winded and, um, and, un, uh, and, and difficult to decipher. And so we pride ourselves on the customer service aspect that we add to the, the experience that we bring. So we are accessible, we are responsive, and we provide opinions uh, in English that is easy to read and to follow. And I think the, that, that really is something that's very important. Um, as we feel, we, we see ourselves, and, and Robert, Jeff, and I preach to our, our attorneys and our staff the importance of we're, when we're retained, we're being retained by a board uh, who looks to us for specific needs, just like they would any other vendor. And like any other vendor, we need to perform. We need to perform daily whenever we're called upon. And, and, and then that is something that doesn't... So if you call our office, uh, we look to get back to you, if not that same day, certainly the next business day. Right, and if um, you're not happy with your attorney and you're not getting a response, then you could call these guys and give your phone number. 1-800-974-0680. By all means, if you'd like, if you're interested in uh, learning more about us, consultations are free. We're happy to come out and sit with you, your board, your manager, and talk to you more about your issues. Find out what it is that you're having problems with uh, in your community, and offer and, and explain to you how we can help. No obligation, uh, but it's just an opportunity. Maybe spend 30, 45 minutes and talk about it, and we're happy to do that. Let's thank the Scar Insurance Group for sponsoring the first half of the show. I know. We're going to go to another we got to go to a break. God, 15 minutes just go by so fast. We're going to go to break. and we come back, we have more HOA talk. We have more condo talk. And we have the best attorneys who handle, like you said, Keys, Dade County, Broward County, Palm Beach County, even Martin Counties. So they're everywhere. We'll Collier be right County. Back. Could your community association benefit from having a more hands-on, education-centered insurance agent? For over 30 years, SCAR Insurance Group has worked with hundreds of community associations throughout Florida, putting education first. Let's face it, insurance can be very complicated and complex. It really pays for itself to partner with the right insurance agency and not just get a quote. Family owned and operated, every employee at SCAR Insurance takes pride in creating an exceptional, warm, family-like experience for every client, every time. SCAR Insurance Group specializes in community association insurance, but can also assist you with home, auto, business, and life insurance. Aren't you tired of not getting all the facts up front from your insurance agent? Contact us today for a free, no-obligation analysis of your current insurance program. Call now at 800-299-5055. Again, 800-299-5055. Or visit us at www.scarscarinsurance.com. Com. Is your community association looking for prompt, effective, cost-efficient, and understandable legal advice and services? You'll find that and more with K. Bender Rembaugh, a full-service commercial law firm concentrating on the representation of more than 800 community associations throughout Florida. With offices in Broward and Palm Beach counties, K. Bender Rembaugh assists clients in all matters of association representation, including, but not limited to, collection of assessments, contract negotiations, covenant review and amendment, covenant enforcement, and construction defect claims. Under the direction of attorneys Robert K., Michael Bender, and Jeffrey Rembaum, K. Bender Rembaum is dedicated to providing clients with an unparalleled level of personalized and professional service regardless of their size and takes into account their individual needs and financial concerns. For more information, visit www.kbrlegal.com or call 954 and we're back with Robert Kay and Michael Bender of the law firm K Bender and Rambam. If you have a question for our attorneys, call them at 888-565-1470. So let's talk about the Fair Housing Act seminars. Okay. Uh, Caught you off guard. <laughs> well, I didn't know if Robert was going to jump in on that one. Um, he was giving a respectful And why they're pause. so popular. Yes. The, okay, well, the fair, let's start with this. The, we have been doing the fair house, we have been doing seminars on fair housing issues and primarily on assistance animals for over a year. And they have, as you, you point out, they, they again are free. 
And maybe light snacks is what's pulling the crowds in, but they have been um, very, well very well attended uh, throughout the year. And the reason for that is because... The speakers. The sp- yes, we have to give credit what credit's due. Right. And uh, the fact of the matter is there are a lot of communities who for years have been enforcing their either no pet policy or pet restrictions. Perhaps they had like a no, no pets over 15 pounds or no dogs or things like that. And for years, these had been enforced uniformly. And then over the past few years, it seems, and I'm sure it's gone on longer than that, but it just seems to have all of a sudden taken off. Yes. It's where become in, epidemic. Right. Where individuals have been requesting what's known uh, in under fair housing law as an assistance animal. They're also, you might be familiar with the term companion animal yes. or emotional support animal. And those, uh, and so what we have is you run up, you have a community where the board wants to obviously uh, support, protect its community and uphold its fiduciary obligation and enforce its governing documents, but at the same time not run afoul of fair housing laws. You have a membership who's moved into a community because it is a no pet community. And they're now seeing pets running around. Let's use dogs as the example because it seems to be the number one example. They use, and there are dogs running around. And so now the board members are being, in some instances, being accused of not enforcing the documents and not meeting their fiduciary obligation. And uh, you have a very angry community over that. You also have very frustrated board members who want to know why this is happening and what they can do about it. So and, what can they do about well, and it? And that's what our class, would, we, 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 provi- we have set aside an entire hour, which I will tell you very candidly, it goes at least 90 minutes. I'm sure. Uh, uh, at least in our, in our Pompano office, and I know that um, Jeff in, in his Palm Beach Gardens office does the class as well, um, that we, we, just spend, we devote the entire time to talking about what, the, what a board can and cannot do, should or should not do, uh, and so you have to come to the class to get all the details. But in general, and I will offer this, is when someone makes a request for an, emo- an assistance animal, and that request does not have to be in writing, it can be verbal. And again, we get into a lot more of these nuances at the class. Uh, a board should never say no. That's going to just lead to trouble. But don't automatically say yes either. As a board, you have a fiduciary obligation, and under case law, Florida law, you have the right to undertake your due diligence to con- ascertain the validity of the request and make sure that it is viable before you grant that reasonable accommodation. Now, if documentation is provided that is sufficient, and I, and I will offer this, this is an area of law that you definitely want to have your associ- experienced association counsel involved in whomever that may be. We are certainly available. We're very experienced in this area. We work with a lot of communities on this area. A lot of times some communities will come to us specifically for this issue and then perhaps if they need further help in other issues down the road if they seem to be satisfied. But regardless of who your council is, I encourage all board members to speak with their council, experienced council, community association council on the issue of an emotional support animal and what you can and cannot do. Board should also consider adopting um, uh, adopting a, a packet, have a packet available of documents that forms that you would provide to an individual who wants an assistance animal. You can't mandate that they fill it out. You can't deny them if they don't. But all, quite often, especially when it's a valid request, you provide them this packet. It's a, do, it's a form for their medical provider to fill out. It's a form for them to fill out on themselves and on, on the animal that they're, the assistance animal they're requesting. And it only asks the questions you can ask. There are certain questions you can ask. So what's the determining factor? Pretty much, there's, is it medical there's documentation? There's multiple, right. multiple factors that, that come into play. There has to be uh, a important or major life function that's involved in the individual requesting. It has to have a qualified medical person that's providing the opinion, basically, that this support animal will alleviate and allow them full use uh, and enjoyment of their property uh, and things to that respect. And like, you're not going to have a podiatrist that's going to be a qualified mental uh, health counselor uh, to give you... Most any, likely. Right. Most likely. They're not going to give you a, a qualified opinion on somebody's need for an emotional support animal. So, so what's the difference just, between a service animal and an assistance? Well, okay, under the difference primarily, and this is talked about in length in the course, but the assistance, the, the difference primarily is fair housing 
versus ADA, the American with Disabilities Act. The American with Disabilities Act talks about service animals, and it's primarily it's dogs. Fair housing talks in terms of assistance animals, and it's not only dogs, it can also be other animals that qualify. The, one, one, the main and probably the, the most important distinction between the two is ADA does not apply unless it's a place of public accommodation. So not in a residential so community. The residential communities, that's why residential communities, you focus on fair housing, not on ADA. So the assistance dogs is more like an emotional support. Probably, well, they can be. And the service be, right. dogs, yeah. Are but more for a, a seeing eye dog is a... Is Would you ass- consider that a service dog? Yes. That's an assistance animal. It, it would be, right, it serves assistance, but it would be considered a service, a service dog animal, as well. Right. The di- but uh, the, other, the other difference between the two is under the ADA where you have a service animal, the service animal has to be certified and have train, be trained and certified like a seeing eye dog right. or a, a seizure dog that, that can f- uh, detect seizures. Under fair housing, for the assistance animal, the emotional support or companion animal, there is no requirement that that animal have any specific training or certification. So that's a, that's a very important distinction. Just gives lots of love, which is right. Their inherent their inherent value is what they're. Hey, you can buy these the coats now. Sure. Over the internet, w- which is exactly the point. When it comes to fair housing, we talk about that. The fact that someone goes online and prints out a certificate that says, uh, you know, my uh, Sasha is an emotional support animal with a beautiful picture of the of the dog. You can go pay twenty nine ninety five and go and get right. that. You know, so as my, what I well I say in the course when I teach the courses I said I can go in and put myself as the picture of that support animal <laughs> for twenty nine ninety five. They don't care. Is that the biggest question when, at the seminars that people ask are about the animals? Uh, it's it, one of in recent times. Although yeah. our last town hall meeting that didn't come up until near the very end, and we had to prompt them. And when we ask, is, well. is, are you in, there was one question that was submitted to us in advance on them. We had about six or seven questions in advance, uh, and one of them was about support animals, but we got into other areas. And, and so at one point, then I said, oh, we have this question on support animals. Do we have people who want to talk about that? And, and yes, uh, you know, about at least a third of the room did raise their hands that they want to talk about it. Um, and so then we get into, into talking about that. And we tried, but at those town hall seminars, like I said, we try to get as much information on a particular topic as we can, but without spending, we try not to spend too much time on any one particular topic, especially because, like I said, you have 50 people in a room, maybe 20 to 30 of them do want to hear about it, but that means maybe 20 people, it doesn't matter. Right. And so we want to give those 20 to 30 people what they want, but then we want to move on to someone who wants to hear another topic. So let me just ask you something. So if you have medical documentation, can you deny somebody the right to have an assistance animal? Because now I'm seeing it all over. Like right. my father's, he lives in Kings Point. Right. When he moved in there 20 years ago, there were no pets. Right. Now all of a sudden there's assistance animals throughout right. the whole development. So I know that this is a big thing. Right. Okay. The short answer to your question is if they provide proper medical documentation to support the fact that their request for an assistance animal is valid. Which is all kept confidential. Which is absolutely kept confidential. It's not part of official records that are open to inspection. But if in that case, then our recommendation would be for the board to approve it. Ultimately, it's a business decision for the board as to how aggressive they want to be. There are there is case there are cases where associations have challenged uh, documentation and prevailed in the courts. In courts, interesting. But, but there but, is a procedure that has to be followed before you get to the courts. An administrative procedure where it is usually a complaint of discrimination made by the the homeowner or the unit owner through HUD that trickles down to the various agencies, either through the state or through the county, to investigate. And in that process, unfortunately, the association is guilty till proven innocent, and the the standards are fairly high. In fact, well beyond what the courts have required, quite often. So, the well, don't associ- you find that if you let one assistance animal in, it's really hard to fight. Somebody Each case else? is individual on, Absol- on support case animals. Case by case approach, absolutely. But do the owners understand that? Probably not. Probably well, not. <laughs> which is why I said if, the, if, if, if as a board, with our, to, with our clients, uh, we have, what we've done is we assist, we work with them and we put together the package I was talking about, the uh, forms, um, and, and also some rules. They should be adopting rules. And, and then let me, I'll address the rules in one second. But with those forms in place, you now have a uniform policy. So now you ask if one person has come in 
You've given them this, they fill out the documentation. The next one who comes in, they have the same documentation to complete. Like I said, you can't mandate it, but you encourage it. And quite often they will complete that documentation. And then if that allows the board to have a comfort level. All their questions have been asked. They'll run, sometimes they'll run those, if they're incomplete, they'll run the forms by us. We go over with them. It does obviously reduce the time that we need to spend on the issue with them, which certainly reduces the, uh, the uh, expense. But again, they're running a business. The board, board members are running a business. And I know that for the most part, they get that. But sometimes it gets lost because it's your home. It's your community. It's your friends and your neighbors. But when you're, you are running a business and there are costs of doing business and there are certain things that you do want to make sure as board members, you reach out. You have your account when you need accounting advice. You have your um, insurance agent like the SCAR Insurance right. Group, who you should reach out to for your insurance needs, your, your management company for your business and management needs. You, get, you have your attorney. Have a line item for your legal expenses because corporations have legal expenses, or they should, and they address them. So that helps when you have a uniform policy in place. Also, one I want to point out, and again, I'm giving some of the, the insights to the class, but on January 27th, in our Pompano Beach office, we'll be offering the uh, Fair Housing Class Assistance Animal versus Pet, um, and Palm Beach Gardens office, please check the website, kbrlegal.com, to find out when they're next offering the class. Uh, but what's, one of the things we do talk about also are the fact that even if the assistance animals are permitted in because they've been verified, that doesn't mean that the owner gets to run amok or the animal gets to run amok. There are certain rules and regulations which can, will apply uniformly. There are certain rules that only apply to pets. For instance, if you wanted to have a, a pet deposit fee, you can require that of pets if it's in your governing documents. You cannot require that of an assistance animal, but you can require oh, that the yeah. assistance animal not be a nuisance, not be aggressive, you know, barking, those kind of things. Or you can cleaning require up after absolute the cleaning up. You can require they be on a, a on, on a leash or held or something like that. Those are requirements you can can have, should adopt, and should enforce. So, what's some of the reasons that they could deny that? that they could deny you having an assistance animal. If you don't, I mean, really, the only basis at this point that I would say, and it's, it's very fact specific. So I'm going to give you the most, the, the easiest answer for me. If okay. the owner doesn't provide, if the owner doesn't make a request, meaning that they're not indicating it's an assistance animal, they're just saying, if they don't, in, if they don't indicate a request, either verbally or in writing, um, or if they make a request and then fail to provide any documentation to support the request, then at that point, it appear, in my opinion, they are, they are withdrawing any request they've made, and it's now a pet and then needs to follow the rules and regulations. So if the pet does not, if this is a no pet community, they need to remove the pet. So that's where the denial, the denial is more of a roundabout from, because the individual making the request doesn't support the request, or they actually never make a request at all. I see why it's so important to have a firm like yours. I mean, so many different rules, regular, different communities. We got to go to our last break. When we come back, we've got more with K Rimbaum, Bender, Bender Rimbaum, K. I <laughs> love these guys. Hey, we'll be right back. Is your community association looking for prompt, effective, cost-efficient, and understandable legal advice and services? You'll find that and more with K. Bender Rembaugh, a full-service commercial law firm concentrating on the representation of more than 800 community associations throughout Florida. With offices in Broward and Palm Beach counties, K. Bender Rembaugh assists clients in all matters of association representation, including, but not limited to, collection of assessments, contract negotiation, covenant review and amendment, covenant enforcement, and construction defect claims. Under the direction of attorneys Robert K., Michael Bender, and Jeffrey Rembaum, K. Bender Rembaum is dedicated to providing clients with an unparalleled level of personalized and professional service regardless of their size and takes into account their individual needs and financial concerns. For more information, visit www.kbrlegal.com or call 954-928 Zero six eight zero, and we're back. I love the first Monday of each month because we get to do our HOA show. We get to do our condo show Mondays, every Monday, first Monday of the month, from th four to five. We got so many shows, I don't even know which time they are. Um, and give everybody your phone number again. 
Um, 954-928-0680 for Pompano Beach, 561-241-4462 for Palm Beach Gardens, uh, 1-800-974-0680 for both. And we only have a few minutes left. If you have a question, an HOA question, a condo Don't be shy. association, and make it quick. this is the best time. I mean, you're going to get some great advice. Call us at 888-565-1470. I appreciate your emails, but this is the best time. This is right from the horse's mouth. They're not horses, though, but anyway. Um, Let's talk about some of the seminars and why it's so important to be educated if you're going to be serving on the board. Well, the area of law has evolved through the years, and it's gotten fairly complicated for the average layperson and for many attorneys, actually. Uh, and board members, officers are faced with issues and questions and a barrage of things from various owners throughout the course of their time on the board. It isn't just go to a meeting once a month, make decisions. In some places it is, but in many it is not. And so having a basic understanding of what you're dealing with is obviously considered important enough by the legislature to require the certification. But even if you just sign the piece of paper that said that you've read your documents and will uphold them, you should still find a way to find some time to come and take the education courses because of the information that it provides. A broad overview of the things that every association will deal with throughout the course of a year. And, and also another advantage when you come to our classes, and we talked about a little bit with the town hall seminar, uh, but especially these board, these are at the board member education classes, at least the ones that we've been holding, we're finding that those in attendance um, help educate each other. Because, with their questions. Because the questions that they're posing are questions that may have already come up, may come up in another person's community or it's something that they, oh yeah, I, I'll hear that, I'll, oh yeah, I, I want to know that I answer that too. So it really is a good opportunity to not only get your own questions answered, but to sit in a room with people, like-minded people who are interested in their communities, who are uh, usually you know, part of the uh, governance of the communities and are taking on this, and it's volunteering, uh, this volunteering that all these, these people do. Uh, and so I think don't that's just come by yourself do. either. Load up the car with the board members to come to these Absolutely. free seminars, and I want you to go over all the dates one more time. Right, and pre-register as well. <laughs> right. Well, we have our town hall seminars are at the Art Serve in Fort Lauderdale on J January thirteenth. That's next Tuesday night Where at six forty-five. Where is the Art Serve? It's on Sunrise, Sunrise Boulevard in East Fort Lauderdale, of Federal Highway. Okay, right, East of Federal Highway, uh, and that's at six forty-five on January thirteenth, next Tuesday. PM. Uh, then at 6.30 p.m. on January 27th, which is the last Tuesday of this month, we'll be at the Knob Hill Clubhouse at 1200 Sunset Strip in Sunrise. Just west of Knob Hill Boulevard? Yes. Uh, and those are both those town hall seminars. Again, um, we encourage everyone to attend, submit some questions in advance, and come to one, come to both. Again, as Robert mentioned earlier, there there's no two that are generally the same. Uh, these are all free. As Renee wants me to point out. Uh, then we have our fair housing class in Pompano on January 27th. Uh, Palm Beach Gardens, uh, please check the website. The board member education classes, we have our cooperative, quarterly cooperative board member education class in Pompano next Tuesday, January 13th. So if you are unable to make the town hall and you're a cooperative, then definitely come for your cooperative board member education. Um, on January 20th, both in Pompano Beach and Palm Beach Gardens, we'll have the condominium board member education. And on January 13th in Palm Beach Gardens and January 22nd in Pompano will be the HOA board member education. So it's an active month. All of this is at kbrlegal.com. We encourage you to go there, click on the calendar, uh, and then and click on the link there, info at kbrlegal.com to register for any of these seminars. Uh, if you also just want to get on our email list for future invitations, uh, you can also give us an e info, email us at info at kbrlegal.com and we'll put you on the list. And if you're interested in meeting with us, like I said, to talk about issues in your community, those we've talked about today, or any issues that have come up, uh, we're happy to come out, do a free consultation, um, no obligation, talk about your issues and let you know how we as a firm can assist you with both our experience and our customer service. You know, we've gotten three or four emails, people asking us for to if they can get 
transcribe of today's show. Well, we're going to do better than that. You can go to your website and actually watch the sh today's show and our past shows over again so you don't have to worry about the show being transcribed. So they go to www.kbrlegal.com and you can watch today's show over again. Or any again. of the shows, any of the previous They're shows They're all well. up on your website, which is... I, I love watching it better than just listening to it. You guys are just, we we love having you on. Thank and you. I know that um, our listeners love having you on. Let's do, give everybody your phone numbers again. 1-800-975, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, 974-0680. I don't use the 800 off, all that often. 954-928-0680 to Pompano Beach. 561-241-4462 to Palm Beach Gardens. And again, you cover all the counties. You cover Dade, Broward, Palm Beach, Martin County. Absolutely, yes. St. Lucie. The or St. Lucie, yes. Collier, the Keys. The Keys. See, when you're a 50,000-watt station like we are, you we've had people, so they've actually heard the show in Orlando. Wow. I've had several people, they were driving to Orlando and listened to our show up there. So, and they can reach out to Jeff at 561-241-4462, and Jeff will be happy to meet with them in Orlando. Perfect. That's, Shout out to Orlando. And, and they do. They do homeowner's insurance. They do all types of insurance. At uh, I meant Jeff Gar Rundbaum at oh. Palm Beach Gardens, our Palm Beach Gardens office. But before we do, I know before we sign off, I do again, thank you. I want to thank Scar Insurance Group for being What's a part of our, Barry, Barry, for being okay. a part of our show today. Uh, hopefully they'll be involved in the future, and I'll uh, get Barry in here with us. Absolutely. Hey, we have another show on Friday, 4 to 5, Ask the Experts, where we bring you South Florida's top lawyers, doctors, home improvement. Everybody have a happy new year. Peace and love. We're out. Thanks for tuning in today to the Ask the Experts show with Steve-O and Renee. Tune in every Friday from 4 to 5 p.m. while some of the top local experts in their field from Broward and Palm Beach counties educate you in the areas of law, health, financial, and home improvement. You can also call our offices at 888-574-6999 to become an expert on our show. The opinions expressed on the preceding sponsored program were strictly those of its hosts, guests, and callers.